Okay, so I love this type of problem because one of the most common responses I get from students is they say, oh, log equals log. And they say, oh, cancel out. And I say, no, they don't cancel out. If you have a logarithm equal to another logarithm, yes, what you're evaluating for has to be equal. But ladies and gentlemen, we have this little subtract one here. So therefore, we don't have a pure logarithm equal to another logarithm. So we cannot just say, oh, cancel out the logs. Um, because there, that's not going to be a follow the property of logarithms. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to get these logarithms on the same side. So I'm going to subtract, subtract my log on the other side. So now I have log of 7x plus 1 minus log of x minus 2 equals a negative 1. Now, since I have subtraction of two logarithms, I can rewrite them as the quotient of one logarithm. So I have log of 7x plus 1. Um, divided by x minus 2 equals a negative 1. Now, remember this is a common logarithm, so therefore I can rewrite this as a base 10. So therefore that's going to be 10 to the negative first power. Oh, I really wrote that wrong. That's a positive 1. Sorry about that. So that's going to be 10 to the first power equals 7x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. I thought that might be a little different. I mean, it would, you still could be able to solve it. It's just going to be a lot more work with you. Um, so now, to get this, now I need to solve for the x. So I can't have my x in the denominator solve for it. So therefore, what I have to do is multiply by x minus 2 on both sides. So therefore, now I apply distributive property. So I have 10x minus 20 equals 7x plus 1. Now, to get my x's on the same side, I'll subtract to 7x on both sides, and I get 3x minus 20 equals 1. So I add 20, and I get 3x equals 21, divide by 3, divide by 3, and I get x equals 7. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, that is how you now solve um, by using your properties of logarithms. Thanks.